doing? Hey, Mommy. Good morning. We hear your babies. We hear your babies, honey. You did good last night. We're going to bring you food and water. Did you hatch all of the babies? You had four late last night. Okay, so we had a baby hat, that baby, I hope that baby that was hatching, I hope this is it. Okay, all right, yes, mommy. Okay, let's get it under mommy. All right, one, two, three, four, five. She already tucked the other two eggs. All right, let's get these underneath, so let's get it under mommy. Let's get it warmed up under mommy, yeah. Okay, good job. Mommy, here's your eggs. I don't know if we're gonna hatch those guys. And let's get the babies. Oh yeah, tuck them, mommy, tuck them all. Good girl. All right, we'll take this. Oh, get this baby. Good job, mommy. All right, we'll get this. Hi, mama. Hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. We're gonna talk about Miss Geraldine. She has hatched out five turkey poults. We're going on seven, I hope. We're gonna talk about all the basics of broody mamas, broody hens. This is gonna be a little bit different of a video. I've, I don't know if I've gone into a lot of detail about turkey mamas and what all is going on here. So welcome back to the channel. Let's get started. Okay, do not tell James I'm doing this. And don't fuss at me. <laughs> I think I can do this. These tires are heavy. But I've got to open this up. I'm using my hip. You, girls, when all else fails, use them mama hips. See? Huh? Yeah? Yeah? All right. Yeah. Three kids? You can do anything. Okay. So I want you to see this before I take the, the lid off. Now, everybody on the planet has different opinions and different thoughts on how to do what I'm doing. Okay? I get it. So you do what works best for you. I always tell you that, okay? And let me begin by saying that what I'm showing you is probably going to change a little bit, has to. Um, but not only that, um, every single experience that you have, whether you are hatching your baby chicks, whether you are getting baby chicks from someone else, or you are dealing with a brood and mama situation, Every single time is going to be a little bit different. So you have to be flexible and you kind of have to have some backups of backups. It's kind of like prepping. You have to have backups in order to help you out. I'll explain. It just makes more sense. So let's get started. But what you're seeing here is my little nursery with mama. Okay, so if you've been watching our videos since February the 1st, which was day one, this is where Geraldine, my turkey mama, She's a very young hen. I hatched her myself here on the farm. She's a homegrown girl, honey. Homegrown honey. This is where she chose to start coming over, over from the main barn. This is the hayloft, go figure. My, my, this is the second turkey. Blanche did it and now Geraldine. Uh, they like to come over here in the hay bales. It's private, it's quiet for the most part. It's gushy and warm, so they, they lay their eggs, right? Well, we kind of figured out, it didn't take too long. To, I told James, I said, she's laying a clutch, and she's going to go broody. Um, she really reacted very strongly. I know this sounds strange, but when I brought Blanche, which is another turkey, and her babies up to the barn, because they, you know, I had this situation in my garage for a while, <laughs> with another turkey. But when I brought them up to the barn, this this girl right here went crazy for those little baby poults, okay? She just like, did, did you see that on that video? It's been a while, it's been a couple months, but it was like she went into a trance, like I want to be a mother. Well, she did. So what she did is she started laying, and let me show you right here, let me come over here. She started laying, here's the eggs right here. She started putting her eggs here. So I gave it a couple of days. Um, I built this up a little bit around her because we actually lost two eggs. They fell off. Do you see that? I've got those bricks there. They fell off, cracked. Luckily, there nothing was incubated yet. So, I mean, it was just a loss of an egg at that time. But I let her go. I was like, okay, she's got seven eggs now. I put the little bricks up. I just thought, well, I'll wait and see. Let me give you this hint. When you have a situation, situation where you think a hen, whether it's a silky, whether it's a buff orpington, whether it's a turkey, okay? If you think that they are going broody, I'm telling you, well, you do what you want, but I'm gonna say it like this, I'm telling you, 
it is best to test these birds. Let them have their eggs or give them whatever eggs you want to give them, mark them, whatever, okay? Um, so that you know which eggs you want incubated underneath that bird. Let, don't get, don't get excited until you know they have sat on those eggs for at least, in my opinion, three or three or more days. That is to test to see, okay, are they really broody? Because, you know, sometimes hens act particular. Sometimes they change their mind. And, you know, even with what I just told you, they can decide a couple of days before hatching or lockdown, per se, they don't want to do it anymore. Huh, it's just like any other woman on the planet, right? So you have to constantly be watching. So I tested her, and after I got to the point of confidence, I said, okay, I'm going to go ahead and declare this day one. I'm probably going to be off a day or two um, because she has been consistent. So I set this last month on February the 1st. We made it, had it on video. I said, this is day one because I already knew she'd been sitting on the eggs for at least two days, right? So I, I was like, I'm guessing this, but it's going to get me in a ballpark. So February 1st was day one. Now listen to this, I've said this a million times. If you were, if I had reset her, what I mean by that is, is if I said, okay, she's broody, and I gave her fresh eggs, took the one she was on away, and gave her fresh eggs that nobody'd been sitting on, okay? The next day is day one. So whether you're setting an incubator, whether you're setting a hen with a fresh clutch of eggs, that is not day one, it is 24 hours later that is day one. That's why I said I knew she'd been sitting on them for at least a day or two. I was pretty solid on that. I felt confident with her. So that's why I said, okay, today's day one, February 1st, we're going with it. You always have to watch because all of these things are an approximation anyway, okay? So turkeys, she, this, these turkeys typically hatch around day 26, which means they're going to go into lockdown. Lockdown period is when they stop turning the eggs. The babies in the eggs get ready to start. They're preparing to hatch, okay? I'm just being very generic here. That would be three days prior. So I knew that somewhere around day, you know, February 26th, 27th, we would be in the lockdown period, might see some hatching. So I've been watching. Well, so you've sort of been seeing some of this. Well, what I've done is I got a brand new water trough. These, this is a, a water trough, a big cattle water trough. Um, and the reason I have this for her is because usually what I do is I use large tubs. You've seen this and I have endless videos <laughs> showing you tubs and all of these things. And we can talk more about that because I have baby chicks right now that are in the incubator. So I'll be showing that at some point too. So I'm going to move this. Now, as you see, I have on top two baby gates. I like baby gates because a lot of times when you use fencing that's cut and the wire, it can cut you, it can cut the bird. Um, and then I just kind of place them over the, the top and then I put something a little bit heavy on there. They can jump out, they usually don't, um, but you could have something get in as well. So what I did last night, got a little dramatic, is I made the decision that I was finally going to move her. I had debated moving her to this situation over the last week because I kept saying, I want to move her, and the reason being is because I wanted her in a safer location. The main thing is I didn't want the babies, once they hatched, I didn't want them to be falling out, especially if it was overnight. Um, it would probably not make it if it did. Sometimes you have babies once the mama hatches them. This is another issue. The baby gets out and away from the mama. It's nice to have a broody mama in a little safe location where the babies are protected. She can call them back to her. They're not going away too far. And the main reason is to protect them so they don't chill is the main reason. They don't get stomped on, they don't chill. Something doesn't snatch them up, whatever. So this is why I use these types of tubs or um, totes or things like that for my broody mamas. This method works for me. Some people go ahead and put them in a little coop. That would work. I don't have her in the barn over there with the big turkeys. I don't have her in a stall with the big turkeys or anything like that because I don't want them to accidentally try to mate with her. I don't want them to try to peck at the babies because believe me, it would only take one or two pecks and a fling 
to um, kill one of the babies. So you have to understand, a lot of times people just let them go out and do their own thing. Sometimes they do it anyway and you don't even know it. I get that. But when I can control their environment, like what I'm showing you here today, I have had great success. Okay, so I have footage from earlier. She was over here this morning and I pulled the babies out because I wanted to see, let me get up here on my knees, oh my goodness. I wanted um, to verify if the fifth baby had hatched, okay? I really wanted to see what all we had going on. So we know as of yesterday morning, out of the blue, uh, not really out of the blue, but there was no signs of pipping or hatching the night two nights ago. And yesterday morning I came out and there were two babies. I left her alone, okay? I took that chance. Um, usually within the first 24 to 48 hours, the babies don't really tend to go out too, too much away from mama, okay? But here's the deal. She was on seven eggs total. And because of the way that I set her, and because of the way this was done, I knew that th this could possibly be a stagger hatch. What do I mean by that? Gunny. What I mean by that is a lot of times, depending on the situation, um, you could have babies hatching out at different times. So if you are in a coop and you have a mama hen that's broody and you have other hens laying eggs over a couple of days and, and she's pulling them underneath her, that means that some of them were incubated sooner than others. So naturally they're going to hatch potentially a day or two sooner. That's very tricky because some mamas, once they hatch so many, they lose interest. They go, they go from, watch me here, they go from broody mama to mama hen. Broody mama, like they're in a trance, to mama hen. And once they go to mama hen, they're gonna wanna be up more active. They're gonna wanna be teaching their babies. They're gonna want to preen. They're gonna wanna be out and be mom, not the incubator anymore. So this is what I'm saying. This is why I try to move them to here uh, to a different, lo not, not necessarily to a different location, but into a massive tub or something because it just sort of keeps them more together. It keeps them safer, makes them feel more confident in what they're doing and it keeps the babies together so they don't get trailed off somewhere. And you know, that happens. So right now she is on five babies and two eggs. I have two more eggs that have not pipped yet and they have not hatched. Don't know what that's going to, how that's going to end up. They could be, a, there could be a demise. I don't know. There wasn't the other day, um, but that doesn't mean that hasn't happened since. So I'm going to wait till tonight and I'm going to candle them. You definitely want to try to candle your eggs as you go through the process. Because let's say in this instance, uh, obviously she had seven eggs. Um, and the best of my ability to try to work with her during her period of incubation um, Sometimes candling can be tricky, but you don't want her sitting on eggs that are not viable, okay? Whether they just weren't uh, fer fertilized to begin with and there was no baby, or maybe there was a demise because if she were to step on it, if they were to break or anything like that, it could be a total mess for her and it could ruin the other eggs. So that's why you need to candle and know. So tonight I will be candling to see where we are on these last two eggs if I don't see any development. Now what I'm gonna be doing now, again, I'm playing this a little bit by ear because turkey hens are a whole lot bigger than your chickens, okay? Usually your chickens, silkies, buffs, your really devoted mamas, once they hatch their babies, no matter how many there are, whether it's one, two, 12, they typically, in my experience, and you probably can Google this and verify this, but I'm pretty confident in what I'm telling you, usually around 30 days, 30, 31 days is what you're gonna find is where they are most devoted in terms of sitting on the babies, leading the babies, teaching the babies, protecting the babies. It's like all of a sudden around day 30, day 31, past that, they click back into, okay, I'm a chicken, and they start laying eggs again. Now, turkeys are not necessarily that way with laying, laying eggs. They're not on that same type of um, schedule, but you'll find that they sort of are like, I wanna get up and go do my thing. Now, interestingly enough, I will tell you this, though. So, you know that I had a, I just mentioned it, and if you've watched my channel for a while, you know we had a, right up here, I had a turkey mama hatch 
two babies and it was very dramatic. I had to move her in the cage down to the garage in this trough. We moved her and the babies and the eggs. And the reason we had to move her is the same exact reason I just mentioned. Uh, I didn't want them, they were up there. <laughs> I didn't want them falling down. I didn't want them falling in between the hay bales. I would never find them until six months from now, maybe. That's a tragedy and we didn't want that. So I knew I had to make a quick decision with Miss Blanche. This is Geraldine. I'm talking about Blanche. But here's the thing, when I finally moved them up here to be with the rest of the critters in the barn, I moved the babies to a dog crate. Okay, it was warm enough. They were fully feathered out. Uh, all of these things, I waited until they were feathered. And I brought them up here, I put them in a big dog crate. Blanche wouldn't leave them. All those weeks later, she would not leave them. So Geraldine uh, is um, gonna be in here for a while, hopefully, and we're gonna give the babies a chance to start feathering maybe. Can you see her? And so what I'm hoping at this time is that I'm gonna be able to manage her being in here for at least several days, if not to into a, a couple of weeks. And I'm gonna have to watch it because she's gonna wanna come up and stand out, stand out. So I may have to let her come out while the babies are in here and she can come back. So this is what I'm saying. No two scenarios are going to be the same. I'm teaching you about turkeys versus that may not be the situation with your chickens. Sometimes I've had mamas hatch babies and I've put them in this scenario and, you know, it's going good. And then all of a sudden she does, she refuses to be held captive. And I don't blame her. So I, d because weather conditions may not have been optimal, I decided to go ahead and take the mama, put her, acclimate her back into the coop. And I left the babies in the actual tub or whatever. What I had to do though was put a heat plate. I don't use heat lamps. They're dangerous. Don't do that, please. Use a heat plate. Um, those little flat things with the legs, you plug them in. It's a very low heat and they can go underneath it. So much safer. If you have babies that are really small and you have to set them up and, the, and, and whatever, I have found also to put a um, seed mat. I have many videos on this. I'll put a seed mat underneath the tub, not in the tub, underneath the tub. So there's no chance of them getting wet even though they're waterproof. And then I have the heat, uh, the plate inside. So they've got like this, little, they're like in a little, con you know, convection oven. They're just so warm and cozy. Their booty's warm on the bottom and they're warm on top and they're so happy. So here's what I'm saying. Here's the ultimate setup. Whether it be a cattle trough, water trough, whether it be a clear tub, have some, okay? And have a backup. I actually, this is one that we got yesterday, brand new with the pine shavings. I told James, I said, just go ahead and get another trough. We need it anyway. So he got me the trough and he got me the pine shavings. I do have pine shavings underneath this. I want you to see. So what you're seeing is hay, some older hay. Okay, she's puffing up. Um, I put down a, a thick layer of pine shavings, okay? This right here, really fluffy pine shavings, okay? And I packed it down. I mean, don't, don't just put them in there, okay? Don't just do this, okay? Because it's really fluffy. It's really loose, and let me tell you, if she's got eggs sitting on pine shavings like this, whether it's a nesting box and they're new, or in a tub, wherever, it doesn't matter, and she starts moving around, those eggs can get lost in translation. Babies can get lost in translation. Believe me when I tell you. So what I've done is I put down the pine shavings, but then I came in with some hay, like flakes of hay that were already like pancakey, the thick, and I've let, layered them out really flat, really compact, just like you would have seen, just like she was used to right here. You see, you probably can't see that. It's kind of dark right here. Okay. That, so she's still comfortable. The babies are warm and they're protected by her, but they don't get lost in like quicksand underneath her. That is actually a very important tip. Regardless of what you're doing, please follow that tip. Now, what I want to show you, and I've shown this in the past in many videos, this is a water base for what I'm, I'm about to give this to her. I gave her some water this morning, and while I was walking around and running, and she sipped and ate and pecked and stuff, 
um, but I took the water out until I knew I was coming right up here right now. I don't want any water spilling right now. She's still potentially hatching babies. I've got fresh little babies in there. You do not want those babies to get wet. You do not want baby chicks. You especially don't want ba baby quail, okay, to get wet. They will they will chill and they will die. You will most likely not be able to bring them back even if they're still alive. If they're suffering because they got too cold, too wet, I'm telling you, chances are really good they're not going to make it. That's just what happens. This happens even in the summertime. So don't think that because like today, it's 77 degrees here in Southeast Tennessee, March 1st, crazy town. But my point is, so we're all comfortable right now. So you would think, oh, it's warm enough. No, it's warm enough above 50. It's warm enough to be protected. It's warm enough to be under mama, but it's not warm enough to get wet. They won't make it. Just like when you have a baby duck, and I see all these people throwing these brand new little baby ducklings in the pool and the water and all that. Wait till they're feathered out, please. I'm not trying to be ugly to you. If a lot of people don't know. They just assume it's a duck. Oh, it wants to get wet. No, you don't want that down wet, okay? Don't do that. Don't do not do that until you, they're starting to really feather out and they can handle the water and the temperature. So I'm putting this in here. It's going to have the quart on top. The quart, and this is the base. This is a quail waterer. Okay, I don't know what they're technically called. That's what I call them. The reason I do that is so that you see how it is just not very wide. I don't know if I have the other one here. I'll show you. So basically they can come and they can sip and they can sip but they can't get all up in that little rim and get soaking wet. So I'm gonna be giving this to her right next to where she's sitting. She can she can sip out of it. I've already worked with this before with Blanche. It does work for the turkeys, but you have to make sure you're filling it more, probably twice a day um, and uh, make sure she's getting plenty of water because this is not a big water. Now, I'll graduate from this. I don't do this the whole time. I like to get my baby chicks or maybe my, ba my baby poult you want to get them pushing a week they grow really fast so at that point what we do is we change to a larger waterer or i'll change to a larger base okay just play that by ear but for all important points that i can make watch the water situation because you don't want your babies to chill what are you doing okay are you going to clean all this junk up it's time for spring cleanup fritz hey gingy Gingy, what are you doing? Okay, so I have to clean I have to clean this. This is what I'm talking about. Oh, I swear I'd lose my behind if it wasn't attached. I'm trying to not fall down on these pallets. We have pallets down and then we put our hay on top of the pallets so they don't mold, tend to mold. So do you see this? I just grabbed this, okay? So this is what you typically see at your local farm supply stores or whatever, right? And they're sold separate typically. I want you to see the difference between, you see this versus that, right? This versus that. So you can see baby chicks, baby poults can get, honey, it's like they're swimming in a water hole in the Great Smoky Mountains that you had to pay too much for a parking pass for. <laughs> had to say it. But anyway, so that's what I'm doing. Now I give my babies a 28% turkey quail starter feed you know that i'm very big into the high protein feeds especially for your babies so i use tucker milling that's the only feed that i use on this farm uh, that uh, we have been using for many many years so i use tucker milling and i use the uh, turkey quail starter it's 28 percent. i actually feed all of my turkeys and quail that on a continual basis uh, they love it. They do great on it. And it's really good also because I keep it in stock in case I have babies. She is so serious. So here's the main thing. You want to keep them dry. You want to keep them safe. You want mama to still have the ability to do what she's doing, which is what where we still are, okay? So see, this whole situation could be very different by tomorrow or the next day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the water in here with the small quail base, make sure she's got her food, and I'm just leaving that available for mom. The baby, one baby pecked a little bit this morning with her, but they are so fresh. They're just wanting to huddle together under mom for now. And what we're going to do is allow that to roll and let her make the decisions of what she wants to be doing. I think she's doing a pretty good job. And we're just going to make sure she's safe, dry, warm, 
and we're gonna make sure she's covered. Somebody asked me about the cats. I have not had any trouble ever. That doesn't mean that that doesn't happen. Have not had any trouble with any of my cats. In fact, she's very protective. Ginger hopped up with me a couple days ago to check her and about got her eyeball poked out. So I think Ginger learned the hard way not to be too nosy, right? At least I think so. But we're gonna be watching. If I have to move it, I will. You have to be flexible in these scenarios because like I just said, what we're talking about today may not be what we're dealing with or talking about tomorrow. Hey, what are y'all doing? There's Blanche right there, y'all. What you doing, honeys? You're, are you being nosy? All right, guys, I'm gonna conclude the video. I think it's a little lengthy. I hope I've covered everything. The main thing here that you need to know is that you need to have different options in terms of being able to change on a dime. Like right now, I have another trough ready to go. I have extra pine shavings. I have a dog crate ready to go. I have extra waterers and bases ready to go. I have my food prepared, ready to go. So if I have to change the situation, if I were to have to take the babies myself and put them under the plate that I described earlier in the video, I can do all of these things. It's important to have these options because like I said, it's not a black and white scenario necessarily of, oh, she's gonna hatch them and oh, she's going, that's it. Some people have that attitude. That's fine if that's what you choose to do, but I try to give all of my girls and babies as much potential as possible. And to do so, you have to be prepared. It's that same thing that we say over and over in different ways, preparedness is key. And the flexibility to understand what you need to do when you need to do it, that comes with experience, but also in some ways I have to say, listening to your gut is very important. I did not move her early. We've debated this over the last couple of days. I've talked about it. And in theory, I would have liked to have moved her before she hatched the babies. But something kept telling me to wait. And so I was, wait, you know, I'd wait one more day and then I waited another day. And I told myself, if I don't have babies by Wednesday, we're gonna have to make a decision. Well, we found out we had babies yesterday, but, um, cause today is Wednesday, March 1st. Be flexible, be prepared and be ready and be calm. It's all gonna work out. If none of them hatch, if it doesn't work out, then move on to the next scenario. There's a reason for that, okay? Just be ready to move on. If you have questions, let me know. We'll make more videos as they grow because again, I'm gonna have to make decisions on at some point, what am I gonna do? Is she gonna, am I gonna have to move her? Am I gonna have to move the babies to a dog crate? Am I gonna have to take them to the, I don't know yet. See, this is what I'm saying. You gotta go with the flow and you gotta be very attentive. Guys, we appreciate you. If you have questions, let me know. We'll keep you posted. And hopefully as our journey with this little scenario continues, you will learn uh, what to work with in terms of what works for you and your farms too. That's the goal. Guys, we appreciate you. Let me know if you have questions, like, subscribe, and share. And we will see you guys very soon on the next video.